Good evening, good evening. Good evening. How you doing? Good evening. Hey, good evening, Sister Elise. How you doing? How you doing? I'm listening to you. Victory today is mine. This morning, oh, this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I didn't have the Lord bring me out. What's going on? Is in peace? Fall on my knees. Lord, help me, please. Got a feeling, shouting victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. I told Satan. I told Satan. We're going to give everybody a few minutes. Actually, this is the Dorothy Norwood version of Victory is Mine. Good evening, those who just came on. Holla at me. Hey, what's going on, Sister Anita? Yes, it's mine. Hey, what's going on, Sister Angie? How you doing? Just a few more seconds and we're going to get ready to get started. Joy is mine. Hey, good evening, Lord. Good to see you, my sister. All right, victory is mine. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, go to God in prayer. Uh, Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, just for just being so awesome. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come into this new series of understanding who Satan is or who the devil is, Father God, that we may have a clear understanding of who he is and what we need to do to stay away from him and become closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just want to let you know uh, this the few house cleaning this Sunday. Uh, we will be church online, Facebook Live. That will be our social media page. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm doing it in the basement. Uh, uh, I may be out of town, so we'll let you know. But we will be online Sunday at nine o'clock. Uh, also, uh, we just want to uh, thank God for what He's doing at the Move Church. Awesome service on Sunday. Awesome job, uh, and and we're going to get ready to uh, do some great things this summer and this fall. We got some great things lined up: church picnic, church anniversary. We have a uh, a church forum slash uh, small business expo. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward 
to what the move church got to move the maximizing opportunity gave victory to excellent families about to do in this community and do for the kingdom i'm, I'm very excited so let's get started uh let's, let's get started uh Today, uh, we want to start a new preaching and teaching series called Understanding the Devil, Understanding the Devil. And uh, I never, I've, I don't believe I ever have done any type of preaching or teaching series. I preached about the devil, but actually just kind of navigating, understanding who the devil is, what his motives, who, where he's from. And you may be asking, why do I need to understand the devil? Why do I want to even get into a conversation about Satan? And one of the things I've discovered is that there are people who do not, and Christian, not just people, uh, Christian people who do not believe in the devil, do not believe that the devil exists. And many of us, because of that mindset, have fallen uh, operate without outside the will of God because we don't really understand how powerful of a manipulator. I'm not going to say he's all power, got power, but how powerful of a manipulator and how crafty Satan is. And to really get a clear picture of how much danger we're in when we're not with Christ or we're not connected to Christ, we really need to understand who the adversary is. What's going on? Deacon Richard, good to see you. We really need to know who the adversary is. We need to understand uh, in, in the military, one of the things you have to do, or if you play sports, any type of sports, you have to know who you're playing against. You got to know who you're against. You got to know their strengths. You got to know their weaknesses. You got to know their tendencies, uh, why they've been so successful, why they wasn't successful. But the reality is, I think once we get done with this series, I believe if we get a clear understanding of the devil, who he is, uh, it will challenge us to make God more of a priority, to make the study of the word of God more priority, making prayer more of a priority. Because if you really knew, what, if we really knew what we were up against and what Satan was trying to do to us, and we really had an understanding and why he's trying to do. I think we wouldn't play this fine line, play church or, or, and depending on the pastor, depending on people to give you what you need spiritually. And I think uh, if we really have this serious conversation that it will get us closer to God because the only way you're going to be able to deal with the devil, the only way you're going to be able to resist the devil is to have a better relationship with God. And I think many of us have neglected our relationship with God because we don't understand how serious and the craft of the devil can be. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, what what we're going to do tonight, we're going to do three things tonight, uh, kind of cover three things tonight. Uh, we're going to cover what the devil looks like, uh, his attitude, and how he ended up on earth in the first place, how he ended up uh, in the situation he's in now. We're going to talk about how uh, he, what he looks like, an idea of what he looks like or who he is, uh, his attitude, and we're going to deal with how he ended up where he is right now and why he's causing so much havoc. That's what we're going to deal with tonight. Uh, the devil is a complicated uh, individual. Uh, I know we have a picture of this 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 man in a red suit with horns and tails. But that is far, far from the truth of who Satan is. Satan is not this gruesome, ugly character. Uh, he goes by so many middle names. He goes by Lucifer. He goes by Satan, uh, Bezabub, the Lord of the Flies. He, go, he has so many different names and he comes in so many different spiritual forms. Uh, this morning, good evening, Sister Kim. Let me say that again. He comes in so many different spiritual forms. Hey, what's going on, Brother Dwayne? I see you. And the mindset is Satan wants to trick us to think that he looks one way, he acts one way, and it throws us off because we're looking for something in our flesh. 
when the reality is Satan is operated and operating in the spirit realm. He's operating in the spirit realm. So, and, and like I said, Dwayne, not necessarily physical shape, but spiritual shapes and colors. Remember that he's in all type of different forms because the Bible said we fight not against the what? The flesh. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We don't fight against, we fight against spirituality and principality. We, 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 we fight against things, not that we can see with our physical or naked eyes, but we're fighting things with our spiritual eyes. And a lot of times the things we're fighting, the things we're struggling, Satan has his hands uh, directly or indirectly into these situations. Uh, you see, and, and so many people are so quick to say that God, what God allows, he does this, God orchestrates this. But the Bible clearly says that God is not the author of confusion. So if God is not the author of confusion, then who is? Who is? And a lot of things that's going on in this earth, and we're talking about why he's on this earth, what his purpose is in these next couple of weeks. But to understand Satan is one, he's not a person, he is a spirit. Uh, he operates in the spiritual realm of things through physical, physical people and through their flesh. Amen? So let's get to it. Y'all ready to go to work? Let's go to work. So first scripture I want us to turn to is Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. So I want to kind of give you what he looked like in heaven and why we don't recognize him spiritually in the, in the spiritual shape of what we see uh, and why we get so caught up and enamored and influenced by Satan. So uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, and I want to go to the 12th verse, 12b, start with 12b. And this is the Lamentation of King Tyree, but this is had been through doctrine and scholars that this is a representation and an identification of what Satan looked like. Uh, Ezekiel 28, 12b, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your cover, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire. Turquoise, an emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub, which is an angel who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. Till iniquity was found in you. But by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as performed things out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering sheriff, from the midst of the fiery stones. The one thing we have to, will understand about Satan, that Satan was probably God's most prized and beautiful angel. Uh, God took a lot of pride and and creating a, the devil, Satan. He wasn't this ugly being. He there, there's nowhere in the text where he said he became an ugly being. He was a beautiful creature. Uh, the Bible says that that you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. And this is one of the traits that Satan used against mankind is his wisdom and his beauty. That's why I say he's crafty. He's very wise. He knows us. He knows what attracts us. And many times, let's be honest, when we sin, a lot of our sin is based on what we physically like through what we see. Uh, we crave what we see. If it looks good to us, we run to it. And Satan uh, operates in a level of beauty and wisdom that if we're not connected to God spiritually and his word, we can look, like, you ever heard that saying, everything that look good ain't good for you? So we get attracted to things that seem good because it looks good, it tastes good, it, it feels good, but the reality is not good for us. And 
Satan was the anointed cherub. He, God loved him. God uh, 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 created him to be this awesome being. He was an archangel, uh, equal to Michael and Gabriel. Uh, and, and he walked with God in it. And we're talking about the Eden, the garden of God, not necessarily the garden of Eden that God created for man and uh, woman, but he walked in heaven with God. And every precious stone was your covering, every precious stone, everything that was glittery, everything that was beautiful. And because you prepared on the day you were created, you were the anointed cherub. You were the anointed cherub. Uh, you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fire. He was able to come and go as he pleased. So not only he was God greatest, one of God's greatest creations, he was able to come and go as he pleased. And you would think, why would you mess that up? Why would you mess that up? But by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence and within and you sinned. So now he becomes rebellious. He becomes violent. And God had to cast him out. God had to cast him out. And what we must understand about Satan, Satan knows how to make things look beautiful. He knows how to make things look good and, and, and enticing to our eyes. And that creates a temptation in us that if we're not connected in the word, if we're not invested in prayer, if we're not uh, invested in Bible study and church serving, those things, Satan can quickly lure you away from God just by showing you something that looks good. That's real talk. Y'all can talk back to me, but I think I said something. How many times has Satan lured you away from God with something that looked good? Something that tasted good, something that uh, that you focused on more on what that looked like than the glory and being connected to God. That is Satan, one of Satan's purpose, to lure you away from God. And he knows how to do it because a lot of times we make decisions based on what how things look to us from our flesh point of view and not our spirit point of view. Y'all tracking? But so we know what he looks like. We know what uh what he entices us with because he's a beautiful angel it's not this ugly red thing with a horn it's not this demon looking thing that we see on tv uh and he operates in the master of the of spiritual disguise i, I think uh, that's right he operates in spiritual disguise and he makes himself look beautiful in everything and we run to it and we run to it, but it's when we in the word of God, is when we study the word, when we're in prayer, we're fasting and prayer and meditating, connecting with God, that God will take the scale from our eyes and we can see through our spiritual lenses. Because remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. We see through our spiritual lenses what it really looks like. And we realize that, hey, that's about the devil. That's about Satan. And it's no good for us. Amen. So let's go and talk about his attitude. So we talked about what he looks like. We talked about how God created him. We talked about the he was one. He was per perfect. He was he had wisdom. He had. A, but what happened? What happened? Let's go to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah gives a, a great illustration. Isaiah chapter fourteen. Isaiah chapter fourteen, verses twelve through fourteen. Isaiah chapter fourteen. Amen. Isaiah chapter fourteen. So we know what he looks like. We know uh, he's a beautiful angel. He's not this ugly thing. He's not this demon we see on TV. He's a beautiful thing. And that, and a lot of times, man, we man, everything look good for you, good, good for you. I'm going to tell you like this. But Isaiah 14, let's go to the 12th verse. And he's going to talk about the fall, the fall of Satan, the fall of the devil. Oh, how... I'm sorry, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakens the nations. But look, this is his attitude. This is why he ended up going against God. This is what, for you have said in your heart, we're talking about Satan, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. 
I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will sit above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Hey, good evening, Pastor Davis. Yet you shall be brought down to show to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who, so, so initially in verses 12 and 14, what happened is because Satan or the devil was so beautiful, because he was created in perfection, he was created to be connected to the most high, he got arrogant. He got to the place where he felt he was better than God. This was Satan's downfall, believing he was better than the creator. And what we must be careful is, and many of us can develop that attitude when we, when we are the creation, think we don't need the creator. And in his heart, he said, I'm going to ascend into heaven. I'm going to exalt the throne above the stars of God. I'm going to be bigger than God. His arrogance cost him uh, his position. He said, I'm going to sit above the heights of the cloud. I will, be, I will be like the most high. He wanted to not only be equal to God, he wanted to exalt himself above God. And right now, say that's what he does. He thinks he's better than God. He thinks he's every bit. Uh, and what he does is he has a way of working through us spiritually because when you operate outside God's word, when you don't study his word, when, when you don't uh, are loyal to what his word is saying as far as not just going to church, but being in study and being operating to a degree, you think you're too good for God. And many of us have the same attitude that the creation thought he was better than the creator. He got arrogant and he thought he was better than God. Let me tell you something. Uh, he, 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 he's upset because he doesn't, he's jealous. The devil is jealous. And if he's jealous of God, that means he's jealous of you. If he's trying to take from God, that means he, what, what make you think he's not going to try to take from you? He was God's most prized possession. He, uh, creation, excuse me. He was what got the most prized creations. And now he gets thrown out. And guess what? You know now what God's most perfect and prized creation is? It is you. You're God's most prized and wonderful creation. Satan is jealous. He is mad because he feels he's higher than God. He feels he's better than God. So guess what? The best way to stick it to God is to try to get his creation. To destroy his creation. But look what God does in verse 15. He said, God said, yet you shall be brought down to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you are gazing, you consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wind and destroyed his cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? So basically, this is what you're going to be identified at. You're going to be identified as a person that creates havoc in the earth. You will be identified uh as a person in the world that created this world become witnesses that you won't even captives. You keep people in prison. You destroy people. That's what you're going to be known as. And that's what he is. Hey, how you doing, Sister Carolyn? That's who the devil is. It is no trick. It's no disguise. This is who he is. He's arrogant. He wants God's throne. And he wants it at any cost. But the, reality, but the problem is he will never get it. And because he can never get it, he's Look, the Bible says he's going to get thrown to the lowest depths of the pit, and he wants to take as many people with him because he hasn't been cast into the pit yet. He was cast to earth. Let me remind you that. Satan was has not been, we're going to get to the text, he has not been thrown into the lake of fire yet. The lake of fire is going to be prepared for him, and he is trying to take many people with him. Uh, we're going to get into this series. We're going to get into how he tried to coerce of Jesus and the turning from God. His goal is to turn you from God so he can have company in the pit. What they say, misery loves company. But because of his arrogance, because he wants to be exalted above God, we have to be careful in ministry when we want to be exalted before God, when we be, when we want to be 
um, held at a higher esteem. We think that what we're doing is about us. When you think what you're doing is about us, you think you got that job because you were so smart. You think you got that healing because you took care of your body. You think you was able to break that breakthrough because you had so much wisdom and knew how to navigate. You thought you didn't get in that car accident because you just knew how to drive and you forget about God. You're no different than the devil. Don't let the beauty of who you are think you can be above God. We're not even equal to God. And the devil, because of his beauty, because of his, his, his beautiful body, and he shined, Lucifer means a shining star. He Look, Lucifer means the shining star. He was, he was the, the sun of the morning. He was the shining star. He was the sun of the morning, S-O-N. He was God's son. And look, you and you who weaken the nations, you weak, and his job is to weaken and cripple this earth. So we get disconnected from God because he thinks he is God. And he'll promise you things. He'll promise you love. He'll promise you things. He'll promise you houses and cars to get you to compromise. And, and, and think about it. We look over our lives and we look where we are now and I look at our spiritual lives. How many things have we compromised for the sake? Because Satan offered us something that looked good. Man, he means you no good. This is real stuff. But what happened? What transpired? So we he know he's one of God's perfect creation. God created him. He was the son of the morning the bright morning star. He, you know, now Jesus took that role, but the bright morning star was Satan. Before Jesus took the role, the bright morning star was Satan. So now what happened? What transpired? Let's go to Revelation 12. Don't be scared. We're almost done. So we know what he looked like. We know how God created him. We know he offers right some wisdom. He's smart. Uh, we find out in Ezekiel. So Ezekiel, if you miss me, Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 to 15. We just read Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, his attitude. So we look what he looks like, but he has, a, so he looks good, but he has a terrible attitude. That sound familiar? How many of you met people like that? There are beautiful people on the outside. Boo, but they're ugly on the inside. They're arrogant, have attitude problems. So everything that looked good ain't foot, but you got to know the heart of a person. Let's go to Revelations chapter 12. Oh, we're almost done. Revelations chapter 12. I hope y'all get this, man. I'm hoping y'all get this. Because we're going this is gonna be a great series. This is gonna be a great series. Uh Revelations chapter 12, verses 7. Let's start with verse 7. And Revelations refers to Satan as the dragon. He refers to the devil as the dragon. So let's go to verse 7. And this is the war in heaven. So he was God's perfect creation. We, now, we don't understand the time frame. The Bible doesn't let me give the time frame. So we don't know if these things happened before God created us, after. We don't really know these things. We don't know the timeline. The Bible does not give us the timeline. But but I would, I would guess... And my belief, I believe this was before God created man. So verse seven, and war broke out in heaven. So he's God created, he got wisdom, he gets arrogant. And what, because of his arrogance, because he wants to take a throne, a war breaks off in heaven. Can you believe that? The place of paradise, the Eden of God now becomes a battlefield. It becomes a battlefield. Verse 7, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels, Michael was the archangel, fought with the dragon. And the dragon and, and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found to them in heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, the servant of old, called the devil of Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angel was cast out with him. Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ has come from the accuser of our brother, who accused him before our God, God day and night has been cast down. Listen, let me go back. So 
because this is going to be very interesting. Cause I don't want y'all to miss this. I don't. I really don't want y'all to miss Revelation seven through eleven. Oh, let me finish. I'm sorry. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. Therefore, rejoice of heaven and you would dwell in them. Woe is to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having a great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. So listen, let me go back to verse 7. Eight, eight. There's a war in heaven because of his arrogance and because he wants to be like God. He decides to take the throne. Satan decides to overthrow the throne. But if you notice in the text, he's not by himself. Satan has convinced other angels that were created by God to stand with him and fight against God. It says right here, and the dragon and his angels fall. Satan convinced other angels to fight against God. But they did not win. And if Satan can convince angels who were directly created from God, not born, not born from birth, but actually God handmade, created to worship him, he convinced angels in heaven to turn against God. What make you think he can't convince you? What make you think? And we have to be careful that we're not playing with Satan. We got to be careful that we're staying in our word because his angels. But this is why I want to stress the fact that Satan and his angels were cast out. The dragon. Uh, I'm going to tell you why that's important. We, I believe that God is omnipresent. What that means is that God can be everywhere at the same time. Let me say that again. God is omnipresent, means God can be everywhere at the same time. Because God is God and no one's equal to God, then I cannot tell you and I do not believe that Satan is omnipresent. This is what, so we're trying to figure out, well, how does Satan get caught up in all this stuff? He's everywhere at the same time like God? No. Satan is not omnipresent. He is not at the same time, place at the same time. Here's the thing. One, one thing the Bible does not tell us, we don't know how many angels that were with Satan that got kicked out. Let me say that again. And this is very important. The Bible does not give us a number of angels that was kicked, that turned against God and was kicked out. So what I'm saying is Satan is the leader and he has many representatives. So even though he may not be omnipresent, even though he may not be, be able to be everywhere at the same time, he is orchestrating and putting things in place because he has representatives everywhere. They're everywhere you go, there's a presence of Satan. It may not be him directly. It may not be him in the flesh or the spirit, but he has a representative everywhere. He can be at the church. He can be at your job. He can be in your house. He can be in your kids. He can be in your car. He can be in your friends. He can be in your mama. He can be in your dad. And guess what? And that spirit can be in you. He has represented. So a lot of times you may not be encountering when you're dealing with people and you're, and you're dealing with, that might not necessarily be the devil, but it, I can tell you this, it might be one of his representatives. So yeah, you, you might say, don't call me the devil, but you're acting like a representative. He got, you may call them imps or whatever. So we don't know how many of these angels that are walking this earth spiritually. And that is why we have active shootings and your vowed at the same time you got wars going on in, you, in uh, Ukraine. That's why the same reason you got people uh, being murdered and killed in one location while this is going on. You're like, how is this happening? Because Satan is not omnipresent. Satan can't be everywhere at the same time, but he does it through his representative, these other angels that got cast out. What is happening, we have gotten so blinded that we only think it's just him. 
We think it's just Satan. We think it's just devil. He is the author. He's already put some things in place. So, so these angels are everywhere. Look, and he cast to the earth and his angels was cast out with him. So these angels and demons, right, Pastor Davis, are walking the earth. So Satan does not have to be everywhere at the same time. But his presence is always felt. It's always felt. And that's what we understand why it's so important that we have a spirit of discernment. And you only get that through fasting and prayer. You only get that. So even like the song said, I told Satan to get thee behind. You might have told Satan to get behind, but all his representatives in front of you. So it's, yeah, it's a cute song. It's an awesome song. I was going to get to the song eventually. It's a cute song. But the reality is you can tell Satan, Satan to get behind you, but what you going to do about all them demons in front of you? You better pray. You better be letting God lead you. You better be letting God be the source of your strength. And look what he said. He, and after he cast them out, but verse 11, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the world of their testimony, they did not love their lives to the death. So in other words, therefore, with just so heaven, you shall dwell in them. And woe unto the heavens of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you to have a great wrath. The devil has come to the earth to destroy you. He has come to the earth because, listen, he knows that he has a short time. That's the word. Satan knows his days are numbered. That's why he's coming at you like a bat or a dog or out of hell, hell, whatever the word is, the saying is. He's coming for you. He told, Jesus told Peter that Satan uh, desired, I think I'm going to deal with that, desire to sift you like wheat. He wants to, and when you sift wheat, what you're doing is not destroying it. You're separating it. You're separating. You're cutting it down. You're cutting it away from the source. Yeah, Dwayne, that's a whole nother subject. And, 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 but he, and not World War, but look, he calls him great hand. Where do you think these wars are coming from? They're being orchestrated by Satan. They're being orchestrated because of, of greed, greed that is put in people and lust for power. The lust for greed and the lust for power. Ain't that, ain't that what Satan's personality is? He lusted for power. He wanted more. And he knows he has a short time to do it. That's why you got so much hell in your life. That's why we struggle. That's why we got sickness. That's why he's coming. That's why this world, he knows. That's why we have, you say, well, there's more crime now than it was before. There's more, actually, because he knows his time is short and he's not trying to go to hell by himself. He wants to take God's creation. He wants to take God's greatest creation. Because what, because what happened is Satan wants to take away what God took away from him. One of the things God took away from Satan because of his arrogance was his ability to worship God. Satan was a worshiper. Uh, many people believe he was the choir leader or whatever. He was the worship leader. And God had a messenger in Gabriel. He had a war of angel in Michael. And he had a worshiper angel, the light, the sun of the morning, the bright morning star, and Lucifer or Satan. Who, but, when, but when God cast him out, something was missing. Something was missing. He kicked Satan out, but he, had, but he replaced Satan. Instead of replacing Satan with another angel to worship him, he replaced Satan with us. We are his replacement. We are the worship because we were created to worship him. And Satan hates the fact that we took his job. He hates it. We took his job. He is no longer God's greatest creation. We are not the Niagara Falls, not the mountains, you see, not the birds and the trees, not the oceans, not the land, not, not all. We are not the gold, not the diamonds. We are God's greatest creation. He didn't breathe life into um, Satan, but he breathed his life and inspiration into man. And he hates it. He hates you for it. Let me say that again. Satan, the devil, he hates you for it. 
and he's going to do everything he can to come for you. He's going to do everything because he knows it's time for sure. It's sure. And that is why every time you seem like you're getting closer to God, the devil fights hard. Just when you're about to get your breakthrough and understanding with God, he shows up. You start going to church and you start to get, the devil shows up. You start trying to read your word and try to get connected, the devil shows up. He don't need to bother you when you already have sin. He doesn't need to bother you when you're at home. And right. And if it, you're right. Oh, oh, thank you, first lady. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, it, and he wants to stop you from worshiping. But how he stops you from worshiping is putting, tempting you to sin. Because you really cannot worship in spirit and truth if you're living a life of sin. And Satan, and when you are living a life of sin, you cannot worship. You cannot really worship. And Satan knows that. So the reality is Satan not only want to take you to hell, he wants to take, destroy your worship. He wants to destroy your glory because your worship is what connects you with God. Yes, yeah, Sister Kim, we can fight back, but God does not want us to fight back. And I'm going to get into that. Our job is to flee. Not, not try to fight Satan. Run from him. Flee from evil. And by running from him, you're running to God. Because the only person that said Satan get thee behind me, it wasn't uh, uh, Dorothy Norwood. It wasn't Reverend Sledge. It was Jesus. And he says, it was Jesus that rebuked him. You don't have the, we have the power to resist sin. We have the power to resist temptation. And we have the power to rebuke the devil and his enemies out of our lives. But the only way you can do it is connect with Jesus. It is that serious, y'all. Satan is not playing. He's playing, what do you say? Satan is playing for keeps. I'm not saying this to fear, to make you scared. I'm not saying this to, to bring fear, but I want you to understand that he's nothing to play with. And he's so crafty. Because every time you try to get away from him, every time you try to move and over, because you're thinking, oh, Satan is bothering that family. But I bet you his representatives at your house. But he knows his time is short. And that is why he, Satan is motivated to destroy you. He's motivated to kill your worship, y'all. And you really can't worship. Oh, and he wants you, he wants you to be worried. That's why he messes with your mind. I like that, Sister, Sister Sledge. I love that. Worship instead of worrying. Because worrying, that's 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 a Satan. The Bible said God did not give us, and not necessarily the way, because yeah, and we want that respect. But the Bible said God did not give us the spirit of fear. That's from Satan. He wants us to be aware. He wants us to be wise. We know that Satan has no power over God. Satan has no power over Christ. He has no power there. And you may say, well, I'm saved full of the Holy Ghost. So even when I sin, I'm covered by the blood. But Satan will attack you to deter other people from getting connected to Christ. He's crazy. He's smart. He's the I said it in Ezekiel. He's, he was created in wisdom. Yes, once your worship is gone, it can slip in and work. And he can slip in and work in your mind, your thoughts and your actions. Yes. Yeah, you want to kill your worship. Because you can't worship God when you're living. You can't really worship him like you want to when you're bound by Satan. But, but here's the thing. We're going to talk about how to resist him. We're going to talk about how we can conquer him. We're going to talk about, listen, we're going to talk about his representatives. Because he got, because here's the thing. I believe the serpent wasn't necessarily Satan. We're going to talk about that as we preach and go through the series in Genesis. I don't think the serpent was actually uh, Satan. I believe it was one of his representatives. Also, you remember Paul says that um, uh, um, uh, a messenger from Satan sent something to Buffalo. You remember the thorn in the side that was sent by a messenger of Satan? One of his representatives. There are so many different representatives. Uh, and we're going to talk about how Satan, how he encounters God. He's not, because here's the thing, Satan's not afraid of God. Let me be clear. Satan is, is, is Satan does not like the results of where he's going. He's not afraid of God. He's not afraid to confront God. Let me be clear. Satan is not afraid. He wants that throne. 
And but one thing Satan knows, he know he you can't he can't be afraid. He knows what's 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 inevitable. He knows where he's going. So he's not afraid. He just ain't going by himself. He's taking as many folk down with him. So don't ever think that Satan is scared. Because what Satan tell God, the only reason that Job is with you because you got a hedge around him. The only reason that many of us, that Satan has not gotten to our minds and gotten to the, not because you're so holy, not because you're so perfect, but it's God has put a wedge around you and he's protecting you from Satan. Thank God for that. Thank God he's protecting us. Thank God he has put some things and some barriers around us to protect us from the enemy. Because he wants to sift you like we. He wants to destroy you. Because yes, he's awesome. He's wise. That's why we say he's crafty. We use the words crafty. Crafty is another word, another word for wisdom. But using it in an evil way. He's arrogant. He hates you. He hates God. So what you think he's going to hate you too? He don't want to see you come up. He don't want to see you successful. He don't want to see your business be able to bless your family. He wants to see you in poverty. He wants to see you angry. He wants to see you depressed. He wants to see you struggling with anger. He wants you in, 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 in relationships that's contradicting to the word of God. That's what he wants. Because that's how he takes away, that's how he takes away the glory from God or tries to. So listen, I'm done. Yes, and get Jesus in a strong circle. You're right. You're right, Brother Dwayne. You better have Jesus. You better have Jesus. And you got to be covered by the blood. Because if you're not, if you're not connected, woo -woo, uh, he's a, the devil is not a good person. He has nothing to play with. He's nothing to take for granted or not take serious. We need to take him serious. And taking him serious is by studying word. Listen, I'm done. Uh, we don't want to assume that everyone knows Jesus. We don't want to assume that, hey, how you doing, Sister Candy? I didn't even see you. Come on. Good to see you. Uh, but we want to extend this invitation to you. All you do is confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe God, raised him from the dead, and the Bible shall be, the Bible says you shall be saved. Uh, if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to be a part of the Moo Church. We want to help you grow. Uh, uh, I would love to be your pastor. I would love to help guide you the best I can in the direction that's towards God. And, and so you can operate in the excellence in God that we can worship in spirit and in truth and be connected. And God loves you for who you are. And we want to be able to love you like God loves you. Uh, lastly, uh, if you'd like to sow a seed in this ministry, uh, you can do that at got to dollars and I cash out dollar sign got to move or PO box 2022 Copa, Virginia 22701. So listen, Thanks for coming out Sunday. We got a word. We're going to stay in this journey. Uh, we're going to stay in this journey uh, of Satan. So many different scriptures uh, that that got Satan all over. So many things going on in this world that, got, that we blame. We say, does God allow it? No, some of this stuff is just Satan and his imps because he is, he's, he is operating on this earth. He is operating uh, through through uh, manipulation, the power of the manipulation. I ain't gonna say he has power. Uh, I'm not gonna give him that power. I'm not gonna say, how, but he's operating through a manipulative spirit and he works on our flesh. And we have to learn how to deny ourselves. Man, I'm just excited about this series. I hope you are too. Uh, Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, for this opening of our series, Father God, this opening of understanding the devil, understanding Satan. But Father God, we also, through this journey, we want to be able to understand you and get closer to you, Father God, that we know that in order to overcome the adversary, we need to be walking with you and connected to you. Father, we pray for everyone that's on this uh, call today, Father God, bless them, cover them. Father God, I, I pray prosperity in everything that they do and everything that they touch. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God bless you and may God keep you.